what I was attempting to do, and hopefully this came across to the audience, is give them, first of all, the rationale for why we study cancer disparities from a biological perspective. Historically, a lot of the research that has been done looking at health disparities, particularly with cancer outcomes, really focuses on the social constructs that li limit patients' access to um, health care for curative therapy and also um, health equity within sort of the cancer continuum. But what we observed was that certain biological subtypes of breast cancer tend to be more prevalent in specific populations, particularly African-Americans and West Africans on the continent of Africa. And then we took this global approach, we call it um, oncologic uh, anthropology, where we looked for the trends of triple negative breast cancer across the globe. And so triple negative breast cancer is really a diagnosis of exclusion because it simply, you know, tells the clinicians that the patient does not have a tumor profile that indicates targeted therapies that are currently standard therapies would be beneficial in the patient. So then that basically limits the patient to having uh, systemic um, chemotherapy. And it's a very aggressive form of breast cancer. Um, and in black women, it's actually twice as likely to be the diagnosis that they're given. And it's an earlier onset breast cancer. So most cancers are late, later in life, but triple negatives tend to be, um, you know, premenopausal. And so what we've done then is across the African diaspora, recruited breast cancer patients from East and West Africa and all over the United States. And we measured genetic ancestry and we found that West African ancestry was associated with the likelihood of being triple negative. So it matches the uh, epidemiological observation. But the unique part to measuring this ancestry is that it no longer um, gives a singular cause being a social factor. So for instance, epidemiological researchers theorized that triple negative was more prominent because of environmental exposures in this population. But all over the world, regardless of what environment, you know, people of African descent live in, they still, we still see a higher rate of triple negative. So <clears throat> I walk them through that process and even introduce specific genes and gene signatures that were associated with genetic ancestry. And specifically, we see a unique immune response in these tumors of women uh, across the African diaspora. And so I, I gave a sort of a picture of what the immune response was. It's more of an immunosuppressive environment in those tumors which actually, um, while it's not a good thing for the patient, we want a you know immune response that your body is helping to fight the tumor in, in an uh, immune suppressive environment. That means your immune system is not being successful with fighting the cancer. But it does mean that women of the African diaspora are probably more likely to have a better response on um, some of these trials where we are targeting um, checkpoint inhibitors uh, are the drugs and we're targeting this immune suppressive environment. And so that's good news in the sense that now that we know this, this trait about these tumors for this broad population that can maybe incentivize giving therapies, this type of therapy, immunotherapies to this particular population. So we're hopeful that that will be the trend. And then I'll end it with the fact that some of the genes that we found were still associated more with self-reported race and not ancestry. And those gene networks were in the context of pathways related to comorbidities like obesity and diabetes and uh, heart disease and other metabolic you know, pathways, <clears throat> which indicates that all of those things about social determinants that in other fields have shown that, you know, if you live in unsafe neighborhoods or if you have food insecurity, which leads to more diabetes and leads to more obesity in this population, 
that it actually impacts their tumor biology. Like we, we clearly see that imprinted on their tumors. And this isn't a matter of ancestry. It's a matter of uh, marginalization in this patient population. So that that's pretty much the take home across the talk. 